are sometimes natural causes of our failure. But two people, I mean, two people that will succeed are people, one, that have discovered their weaknesses. Two, you have allowed Jesus himself to help you. This is loud. Amen. 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 Good. To help you. Apostle Paul said in Acts of Apostles chapter 7, verse 27, he said, oh, wretched man, oh, wretched man, who can help me? In 25, he said, thank God for Jesus. Church, we are entering 2020. These are things you need to watch out. Don't allow mad dogs. Don't allow mad dog to dance at your areas of weaknesses. Bring it before God. Bring it before God. And he will tell you as he told Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, in your weaknesses, my strength is made perfect. Let's open our mouth and begin to appreciate this good God. This God that have not allowed our weaknesses to stop us. That have not allowed our foolishness to stop us. This God that have not allowed our failure, our sins, our mistakes. Imagine we are crossing over. It's just left a day or few or more for us to cross over to 2020. Many are not crossing over. But you are crossing over in style with testimony. Not as if you never make mistake or you never, I mean, you never made any mistake or you never, no, it's just by his mercy. To him be all the glory. To him be all the thanks. To him be all the adoration in the name of Jesus. The Lord shall keep you for these remaining days to enter 2020. And as you enter 2020, you are entering with testimony. You are entering with breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Put your hands together as you get seated. <laughs> Sit down. Praise the Lord. You know, there are a few secrets I discovered at the early time of my ministry, church, um, sister Mary and family, God bless you. Yeah, welcome. We are happy to see you. You look very lovely. Amen. Don't mind Pastor Joseph. You know, the physical Pastor Joseph is still. It's only Jesus in me. That is the only good thing. Amen. When things are not in the way I want it to be or keep on making the same mistake, Every day, it irritates me. It takes me something. It takes something out of me. You know, the same mistake, like a child. Anyway, to God be all the glory. We give God all the glory for the opportunity to have alternatives. Church, I want to ask you a question. Like I told you, there were a few secrets I discovered at my baby stage as a minister. And those secrets has been a big help to me. You know, those secrets has made up the success that I that I, that I'm Amen, amen. And those secrets, if we will a kind of grab it 
as we enter 2020. It's going to bring, it's going to, it's going to, how do I say it? The success you are going to see in 2020 will amaze you. If we are able to get those secrets, praise the Lord. One of the secrets is what I want to share this morning. Because today being the last Sunday of the year, I want us to hold something in our hands as we are crossing over to 2020. Church, I also want you to know I think it's the other one. Amen. I'll reduce it a bit. Let's see what happens. Amen. Amen. Yeah, good. So, church, I don't know whether I'm making sense. Praise the Lord. Don't mind the technical. Yeah, that's that's not up. Who we'll preach the gospel? So, if you are asked now, what are you crossing over? What are you crossing over 2000 and 20 with? How are you planning to achieve? Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't worry, we'll get there. Just give me a minute. And that is what is slowing me down anyway. Because this microphone doesn't give a... Doesn't represent me well. <laughs> it, it brings... Changes my voice. So the other one will be better. Praise the Lord. And that's why we have extra battery so that... When we start, we just change the new one so that we'll not experience all these things. For all the same. Reality, eh? Amen. Praise the Lord. That's good now. Very clear. So, church, let's get into our... What are the things that you are expecting next year, 2020? And how are you planning to achieve those things? That's the question. Is there anyone that can help me? Can anyone help me to... I mean, okay, let's share. How are you going to achieve it? Let's share. All the things you want to achieve next year, how do you how do you expect to achieve them? Jimmy, the question is you have some certain things you want to achieve next year. Heaps of things. You have planned them, some are supernatural, some are just natural things. Some are these, some are that. How do you intend to achieve them? That's the question. Persevere. You're going to persevere, which means you need endurance. Endurance might be like um, engine, but not the driver. I want to hear about the driver. Does that make sense? Endurance might be like uh, the kind of horsepower that the engine has. The engine of your success, you need endurance, which it might be a v, V8 engine or V6 engine. So your endurance is the capacity of the engine. But I want to hear about the one, the, I mean the driver and the type of car, or you know, mainly the driver.
beautiful. You want God. You want God to bring it to pass, right? That's a wise saying, and that's a wise thought. That's also a wise way of achieving your stuff. Now, you give God the car. The car you gave God is the fixes of it. Eight is left for you. But the main important thing is God is the one driving it. That's, let's put our hands together for ourselves. So does it mean every plan that we have for next year, we are going to hand it over to God? Church, is that what we mean? Yes. Good. Now, how does God, through which way, has God has God told us, whatever you are looking for, if you do this, if you do that, then whatever you want me to do for you, I will do for you. Which way? The true prayers. That is beautiful. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together, church. You know, we are getting, it's good that we are kind of agreeing on this step. Steps towards achieving mega success in 2019, uh, 2020. Now we have said true prayers. Now I want to ask a question. Are there people that are praying and yet nothing is happening in their lives? Is it possible to pray and yet you will fail? Now what's the difference between the people that prayed and it worked and people that prayed and it never worked, it didn't work? Mashaka Borea Bakaraba She Baragada Mahamba Baha Baha. Abaragada Mahaburu Guduya. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great things he has done. Unto Jesus be the glory. Great things he has. One more time. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great things he has done unto Jesus. Be the glory, great thing. Do you know the other day, I was, it was ministered in my spirit that people choose how they die. Is your choice. You choose how they die. Some die happily. It's just like when we finish Malaysia, coming to Australia, moving from Malaysia to Australia, we, we are so happy that we are leaving Malaysia with, you know, God gave us good pass. Though when we came to Australia, we started afresh. But that joy of transition, transiting well, do you know even in death, when you are dying, you will be laughing. <laughs> it's your choice. It's your choice. You'll be, oh, check my bank account. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't withhold anything that belonged to people. I did everything. Did you look after your in-laws? I looked after my in-laws. Did you look after your parents? Lord, I'm sorry, that was where I failed. Did you look after your children? Were you able to train them in a way that when they grow, <laughs> when I'll be marking all these things, I'll be ticking it. 
I never withheld anything. It will be a joy. Did you train your children well? What price did you pay in your marriage? What did you do? I'm telling you, my dying bed, people will be crying. I say, no, 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 no. Another one is, just imagine. Just, just imagine the kind of level you operate in. All I need is just to make you understand all these things, which you have. Every question is answered accurately because of knowledge. That's all. For lack of knowledge, my people perish. Imagine Apostle Paul. He had no pain. Despite all they did to him, no pain on his body. The only pain he had is in Galatians chapter 4, verse 19. He said, my pain, I am in a pain of a woman in childbirth. And I was trying to see whether it was the pain that they flogged him 39 times, whether in a pain that they put him in an ice cold place, whether it was the pain of what he suffered between his brothers, whether it was the pain of betrayal. I didn't see all these things. He said, I am in a child, pain of a child, but of a woman, like a woman in childbirth. And the pain is because of you, my children. The only pain Apostle Paul recorded that he ever had was the pain of his children not knowing Christ. Jesus. How many ministers of the gospel today that their pain is because their children, their, their, their children doesn't care about hellfire. They don't care about heaven. All they care about is prosperity. All they care about is money. All they care about, ah! I said, God, to you be all the glory. Look at the wisdom. Look at the wisdom. Look at it. Prayer. Some people pray and doesn't work. What's the difference? Accurate. Accurate answer. Lack of faith. And she put it. I said, though we are still persevering. Though I'm among the people, I still know, but yet I don't live. Jesus will help you. Church, these are the kind of things when you hear from your members. You'd start planning for your retirement. This is a kind of level of oppression when you see your children operating. Your peace, your joy will grow. I'm the happiest minister. So you know all these things. Let's keep on rolling. Pashoka Bahakatea. Sokotoro Mohosu Kataya. We have achieved. That all our project for 2020, if we do not bring it to God, it will not come to pass. That's beautiful. Number two, how on earth has God explained to us that this could be achieved? Prayer. There are people that pray, that are praying more than you, yet there is no testimony in their life. Why? Lack of faith also. Let's move to the next level, the next question. The same way you train yourself in education, the same way you train yourself in a class that you want to learn, used to, you know, get a job from. So is there any way to train yourself towards faith? How do we train ourselves towards faith? To be people that have faith, to be people of great faith. Through the word of God. Absolute. Through the word of God. Now, where is the center of the, through the word of God? Where you get the word of God? Where is the, like now, when I did my courses there, we were building, I was, I was leaving my house, traveling every day to go and get and study and get knowledge to be able to own my own care home or church care home. Where? Where is the center? So you just, faith, you just come, you stay, sit in your house, faith will come and run to your head. To what? Church. church. Pull your hands together. Now, 
you have preached my message. But let me show you something from the scripture. I'll show you something. Let me ask the children of Israel and the church, you know, going to Jerusalem, going to Jerusalem to go and love the children of Israel and coming to the church to love the word of God, which one do you think is more powerful? Do you know who Israelites are? They are the one chosen by God. They are example of heaven on earth. They are a test of heaven on earth, the Jews. So the church and the Jews, which one is most important to God? The church. Why do you say the church? Push Arakas. Hold it. It's okay. Thank you. Put your hands together. I don't. I, do, I, I'm so happy for my children. It means I have not been wasting my time. Kayabaha. Now let me now start from the original, from the beginning. Now Egypt, when God created heaven and earth, I didn't know how it happened. I didn't know, but Egypt was. The apple of God's eye on earth. Am I making sense? So Egypt became like the firstborn of Jehovah. What's the time there? 14 minutes, right? After. 11.15, okay. Church, are you getting what I'm saying now? Israel was, I mean Egypt was what? The firstborn of God. God loved Egypt. God so much blessed Egypt. Read your Bible from Genesis. Now, Egypt represents Africa. God so much loved Africa. I know when you read the Bible from cover to cover, you find out why is it that Africa has come to the level they are. It's all in the Bible. I discovered all these things and I decided not to behave like Africa. And any man, God placed a curse on Africa. I'm not going to tell you where it is so that you read your Bible. God placed a curse on Africa. God personally placed a curse on Africa because Africa was doing what? Africa was helping the Israelites anytime God wanted to teach them something. Oh, so you're blessed. So you don't want my children to pass through the training. I want them to pass through. And God said, because I have blessed you, that's why you are challenging my training. And God said, you shall be known all over the world, but you will remain insignificant. And you will be known everywhere. And there's nowhere in the world they will not see you, but you will never make any progress. You, they will just see you, oh, he's African man, oh, African American, African Australia, African, African, look, Africa everywhere, Africa. And I, when I, re, I cried, I said, God, I refuse. And when I prayed about it, far back, 1990 something, God tested me. I was in my time of wilderness experience. A woman was giving me $200, I mean 200 Naira, every day. Because I left the business I was doing, because it was corrupt, clearing and forwarding. I left it. I said, God, if I perish, I can never. Yeah, can you? You can't give some, you are corrupt and you want to go and change people that are corrupt. You can't give what you have. You go to do. Yeah, I will be given the corruption. When I lay hand, corruption. I said, God, clean me first. Because evangelism starts with self. So in the church, I started doing something because I knew how to drive. I started teaching people how to drive. Free. But a woman said, no, you can't be doing this free. I'll be giving you $200. 200 naira every day. And I was the breadwinner of my family. So my family couldn't eat without me. So God raised that woman to be giving me. And immediately she gave me the 200. I'll go and give it to my family to cook. I used to share this story, but it's very true. We had a dog then. 
The name is Murphy. And this dog, when I bring 200 naira, because what should be able to take care of a family as big as mine was like at least 500 to 700 naira. But when I bring 200, they'll just go and cook. If you see the kind of fufu, semolina they will give to the dog, it will be bigger than my own. And I will say, why are you giving this dog? I'm the one giving He said, that's the 200 share. He said, other, other mate, the people that are looking after their family, they bring 1,000 naira, and you only bring it 200. So you eat 200 naira. <laughs> that, my family is not, is not when I left Claren. It was wilderness experience. So this woman was giving me, doing a lot of things. At a time, the woman went and bought a wristwatch, 6,000 naira. And when she bought this wristwatch and brought to me, immediately I touched that, that wristwatch. I started that scripture about Africa, 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 Africa. I told the woman, I said, I'm not going to take this wristwatch. He said, no, you are stupid. You are crazy. I said, no. This was what happened to the Africans. That was why God caused them. I said, I'm having a feeling that I'm doing the same thing. He said, why? He said, God is not expecting me now to be wearing this kind of expensive wristwatch. I'm passing through my wilderness. When I get to my Canaan, I can wear it. But for now, I don't think you need to spend this money. Do you know, do you know other ministers would have jumped at it? You and your wilderness experience, everything I do is speaking in tongues, praying, sleeping in the church, nothing, fasting, fasting, fasting. Do you know I was given tithe of 30 naira? As if I was getting 13, 13, I mean, uh, 300 naira every, I was giving, I was faithful to it. Even if I didn't make extra money, any other, because I used to go, I have a tailoring shop, you know, I, was, I go there. I walked five kilometers going, five kilometers coming back. I was passing through my wilderness experience. And here is a woman that wanted to now use her money or her influence to bring me out of my wilderness experience. God wanted me to learn how you can see snake and they will not bite you. By looking onto the altar and the God was teaching me how you can be with scorpion and, you know. And now this woman wants to say, no, no, Edika, I'll fire a flat for you. I make... I called the woman, I said, if you do this, if I take this research, God will cripple your business. Because my level now, my stage now, is to pass through my wilderness experience, get all the understanding, because when you pass through your wilderness experience well, it's very easy for you to live in your Canaan, because there's no problem you have in Canaan that will be greater than the one you had in wilderness experience. God is giving you the biggest battle. And the woman said, you are crazy. I said, I'm, auntie, I'm not taking this, this watch for your own sake, not for my own sake. Am I making sense, church? That was how God cost Africa. I said, God, you will not cost this woman. I said, take, take back the wristwatch. Exactly, that wristwatch was almost like this one. Today I have more than four better ones. Didn't buy with money. Gifts. Better resources. Because now it's my Canaan. That was my wilderness. Be careful the people that want to bring you out of your wilderness. Go and cause them. I'm telling you, this is not about, Pastor Joseph, why are you always very disciplined? And, uh, this, is the, this is the word of God. If God wanted to pass through your wilderness and somebody is trying to bring you, either your friend, you are endangering the life of that your friend. You are the, that was how God cost Africa. That's why Africa up to today, except those that when you understand it and you remove yourself from that character. Talking from the original. So Egypt was God's, 
Then at a time, when God started seeing certain things, civilization is start, has started taking over. Israel is the, from Egypt, go and read, read history. Forget about all this uh, white people are doing, saying they are the ones that colonized the world. They didn't, we colonized the world. We were the first to colonize the world, Africa. Egypt, civilization started in Egypt. Writing started, this thing you are reading now, everything you are reading, it started in Egypt. And when civilization wanted to take over God, and said, no, I'm going to call out a pure people from Egypt. He called out Israel spiritually. So Egypt is still the physical firstborn of God. Then Israel is the spiritual born of God. And God... When Babylon was destroyed, God now gave a different, gave, gave us the understanding to understand Babylon is like hell, a type of hell on earth. Israel is a type of heaven. That is why when people go to Jerusalem, everything, they pick water, they say this is heaven water. Everything, they did that. But when Jesus came, he came, everything changed. Not as if God threw away. Jesus said, none of this letter, nothing of the Old Testament, no. And Jesus introduced what is called Zion, heavenly Jerusalem. And that was why when I asked the question, and she said, the bride, I said, You've, I don't need to, you know more than me now. No need testing you again because you know, and that's my joy. I want to raise generations that are better than me, that knows more than me. So God said now, Israel, and now when Jesus came and died for Israel, died for everybody, Jesus was picked by Jehovah to be the greatest thing. He said, at the mention of your name, every knee shall bow. And the wife of Jesus on earth now became the greatest thing. No more Israel. But Israel is still second. You know, thank God for people like Bishop Benson, our Bishop Benson at the house. Hey. Thank God for men like that. Where would we have been without faithful men like our bishop? Where would we have been without? He said, more than 10 times they have taken me to Jerusalem. And they will say, let's go and see the grave of Jesus. He said, over my dead body. <laughs> that man, the only a word he will say, if you diagnose it, if you dissect it, if you check the implied and applied meaning of it, that's revelation. He said, let's go to the grave of Jesus. He said, from a wa fuglu. They say, why? He said, why seek the living among the dead? Jesus is no more there. When I was reading one of his books and I got there, I paused for a moment. I said, is this pride? Or is this saying, when I checked it, it was pure revelation. Why seek the living among the dead? go to his grave. He's no more there. If he was alive and he's, you know, I would have gone. But now he's gone. What am we going to do? He's to contaminate myself. I'm not the dead. I'm among the living. Am I making sense? Are you getting where I'm going? Are you getting my drift? Now let me read something for you. Psalms 87. Listen very well. I'm going to read it myself. 87 from verse 1 to 3. A song, or song for the sons of Korah. Now this is God talking. His foundation is in the holy mountains. So what does that mean? If you really want God to be the one that will cheer everything or stay, everything you want to achieve next year, you must locate God's foundation. God said, don't look for me anywhere. Don't do anything. My foundation is in the holy mountain, Zion. 
The Lord loved the gates of Zion more than all the dwelling of Jacob. Have you seen it here? God loves church, his church, more than Israel. He's, look at it here, Jerusalem, the children of Jacob. Verse 2. The Lord loved the gates of Zion. More than all the dwelling. That was why Archbishop Bessie, that was I say, it's no more here. It's no more in the grave. He said, those that must worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. Archbishop said, no. But when he said things like that, you will see people who say, proud man, leave him. Let's go and take a picture of the grave. Boom, boom. When you come back to him, you say, have you finished? Let's go home. Sometimes you say, uh, 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 and, uh, and now I know you can now, since you have not raised any dead person from the dead, you can start raising rat and cat. He will just play that joke. Because you don't need all those things to raise the dead. You don't need all those water. Some people, who can, if you see where they are carrying their water in an aeroplane, they say, no, we don't want any, uh, no, this is holy water. Look at it. The Lord loved the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Now look at three. Glorious things are spoken of the O city of God. What does that mean? You say ears have not heard. That's what it means. Eyes have not seen. Neither had he entered the mind of any man. What God has prepared for the people that dwells in Zion. Is my message making you sleep? Are you getting something? How are you going to achieve all that you want to achieve next year? By being employed. Being employed in the house of God. Let all your thought. Something happened yesterday and brought out tears in my eyes. One guy that is doing very, very well with Facebook in winning soul, bringing knowledge to the mind of people. He asked me, why is your recording not facing you face to face? That these are the challenges that people do have. Sometimes they think you are faking it. But if your recording is seeing your face, people will know it's you because they have already seen you. They know you are doing well. I said it was, this recording was recorded when my first daughter was six years old. If you see Gloria at that time, it wasn't very easy for her. When other children will be playing around, Glory will stick to the camera. And just be doing, listen to, I'm talking about, she started it even when she was four years. My wife and I, we had to force her. Do you know what we are doing to her? Glory, focus on Zion. Get employed. And the guy shouted and said, a six-year-old girl did this. I said, that was five years ago. A six-year-old recorded this video. And I just... The other thing he said to me was what made me brought tears. Because I knew what this girl passed through. We were pushing her while others were taking their children to the club, while others were taking their children to everything, while others, we said, glory, house of the Lord, Zion. The girl that is just in primary six, and they gave her to be the leader in primary, in the school. What are the testimonies? Why? I will show you the reason. Follow me to, to Psalms 120. Now imagine, look at, look at this girl. Watch it. It's not even now. Watch because with the father. You say, train up a child in a way that when she grows, she, I'm, mark my word, being a president, a president of Biafra will be the least thing. I'm telling you, this lady is going to achieve. When I was paying the price, preparing her, which I'm still preparing her, anytime they call me in their school, do you know this girl is a leader? 
I, when, when, when I found out the, 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 the power in the word of God, when I found out the power in righteousness, when I found out the power in living by faith, I said, God, one of my children, Archbishop said, I used to say it. He said, I'm above being a president. It's meant for my children. I said, one of my children will be a priest. Before even I married my wife, I started praying to her. I laid the spiritual foundation. You will say, watch out. What is it that a president can achieve? This lady is going to achieve it. Why? Because we have introduced her to the earthly door to every blessing, to any blessing you need in life. It's called zeal. You say, behold, one, one to eight of Psalms, verse four. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feared the Lord. You say, look at how God will bless anyone that feared the Lord. Number one is what shook me. He said, the Lord shall bless thee out of Zion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you ever want to see a blessing you have never seen in life? Do you ever want to see a testimony you have never seen in life? Marry the church. Be a pillar of the church. Leave the community. Leave Australia. Australia doesn't have Australia. Oh, church! How I know? How I wish you know? Australia will only offer you civilization. Civilization is against spiritual things. Go and write it down. The most civilized nation. In fact, Australia have not tested the civilization that Babylon tested. Australia have not tested the civilization that Sodom and Gomorrah tested. And Australia will never test it. Only Centrelink now, they want to be taking money from people. Every, they, they are changing Centrelink. When we came newly here, Centrelink was throwing away money. If you give birth, they will give you 7,005. Everything, they will give you money. Money, money. Now they are bringing it back. That was Tony Abbott. He said, well, let's not be throwing away all this money. Julia Gillia started it. They wanted to stone Julia Gillia. Stay every single month. They will reduce their money. They, will, <laughs> Julia, they wanted to kill Julia Gillia. Now, what was Babylonian civilization? Nobody goes to work. Only drinking, and the government will be feeding you. <laughs> you don't understand. It has never happened anywhere, even in America and here. And that is why it's written in the Bible, because that's the climax. Sodom and Gomorrah. They were to walk in. No, Santa League was coming to their house and knocking. Have you gotten your one million? Boom. Have you gotten your... And that one million was to buy drink, have fun, go to pop, go to take drug, do this. That was it. They will knock at your door. We are Santa Link, Santa Link. At Babylon, it's not only you have to walk. Even walk on Sunday, walk on weekends. So who is fooling who? Who is, who is here to tell me that I'm here for a greater thing? Nobody was working. No work. They were just sitting there eating, enjoying. If you're a citizen of a Babylon or Sodom and Gomorrah, they had laborers, they had people working for them. All their citizens, if you're a citizen, not I've never achieved, I honestly have not come to that level. Surplus, no power, and people are foolish enough after reading the Bible, they will come and say Australia is my heaven. Australia is, it's not Australia, a rat in Nigeria is a rat in Australia. A rat in America is a rat in Burundi. A rat is, the way they are, they are, they are, they are, is a about mindset. It's about mindset. If you change your mindset, you survive in Nigeria, you survive in Australia, you survive everywhere. It's your mindset. Imagine. I don't want to talk about myself. Because ask my wife, even when we married, we had no place to sleep in the church. Because I was so attached. Look at the blessing. He said, Thus, look at the kind of blessing. He said, The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children and peace upon Israel. Church, I'm here to tell you, watch out. How many, how many years have you known me? I can never go down. 
It can never be that last year is better. And that's what I'm telling you, church. I wish you would step into this level of prosperity. Teaching this morning. What's the topic? Jehovah's earthly. What, what is it? Jehovah earthly blessed doors. The only door he can use to bless you. I'm not talking about prayer ministry. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about. I'm talking sincerely talking about. Getting committed. I wish you take more decision to get committed. Now, when uh, Jesus said, "Those that worship Him must worship Him in truth and in spirit." Let me tell you this profound truth, but you might not believe it. Listen very well. Listen. This is very. This is very very important. If I'm a genuine man of God. I'm more important to God than Australia. No, no, it doesn't make sense. If I am truly faithful, I am more important to Jehovah than Australia, the entire Australia. That was why he said, I will give nations, I will give nations to save you because you are my voice. Now, what does he mean by those that must worship him, must worship him in truth and in spirit? It means living by faith. If you have a genuine man of God around you, please, don't call him to, for money. Don't call him, I mean, maybe, pastor, we want to give you money. Forget about that one. God will, re, re, God will replenish him. God will bless him beyond. Imagine like I was telling you when I was passing through my witness. He raised the woman that was giving me two, 200 naira. And do you know one of the things that separated me from that woman? The time for convention. The woman said you will not go to the convention. <laughs> I said that's the problem. Thank God I didn't take the sister's underlay watch. He said, you're not going to, I said, convention that is keeping me alive. Church of God Mission Convention that, and she now posed and said, let me see how you are going to go. Am I not the only source of income you have? God knows I'm not lying. And what she did, she went and bought a diamond ring earring for my mom. Before I could come home, he gave the diamond ring to my mom. And he came, and my mom was already rejoicing. And he said, I don't want Idika to go to convention. I want him to be uh, five days. How, what will I be doing without Idika? I told him, I saw the earring. I said, Mom, this is not your earring. He said, Yeah, this lady bought it for me. She just brought it now. I said, Remove it. I said, Remove it. Remove it, Mommy. Remove it. Nah! My mom knows I'm a tiger. My mom removed it too. I said, give it back to her. Give it back to her. Who is she to stop me from going to conversion? Who is she to stop me from dwelling in Zion? Who is she to stop me? Who is Leave my house. What do you think God will be doing in heaven? I'm not, I don't need to think. I knew that she wanted to be the African. That she was created to be. How was I going to go? I forged ticket. I forged ticket. I say, if I perish, even if the last evil I will do, Lord. And I heard when I left that she came. He said, if you are too serious with going to this conversion, Take this money. My mom told her he has already left. He has gone. Take money for your transport. That was my heart towards God. That was how employed I was. In Zion. Never to compromise it. Never to have any other boss. Look at it today. You know, those around me will not understand. It's only me. I knew where I started from God. 
where he picked me and that knows where I'm going, that knows his expectation, that knows the condition of this assignment, that will understand where God has taken me. That is why when I'm thanking God, people will start, are you a foolish man? These, are, these were the promises he made. I say it wasn't. It wasn't for people like us. But his mercy, his mercy. Have you not read the Bible? He said, the eyes of the Lord walking to and fro, searching for those that their heart are perfect. Which means, does it mean God didn't plan himself well? He planned, he called many. He has already positioned people in my position. But because pride, civilization took them, he now started looking. God cannot, after planning, start looking again. He was looking because the people he called has disappointed him. Now foolish people like us. He uses the foolish things. How are you entering next year? What is your desire? How are you going to break through? How are you going to succeed more than the way you succeeded in 2019? Is by getting employed in the house of the Lord. Get serious. All these children, on the last day you will see it. Pastor Joseph was very strict. But because I knew. I said, it's narrow. It's the way that leads to heaven. Narrow. I don't want to go with foolish people. Instead of me running with, uh, looking for crowd, 3,000 people, and lose 11 that I will take to heaven. Have you not heard? Only one person. Only one person. There is joy in heaven. That's my target. The joy. The celebration like my father, Abishop. There are many that have gone to heaven and come back. That said, the day this man entered heaven, heaven shook. Everywhere. That's going to be my testimony. Every facet of my life. I'm going to finish well. I'm going, you see, my, every facet, my children are going to be the greatest. My wife, her testimony will never end. The community I live that testimony, if I will finish well. And do you know the last thing that will be happening? My God will be blessing with the bullet against the devil. Tum, 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 tum. And instead of me to fail, the day I will make that mistake, God take my life. Church, stand up. 2020 is coming. What is your decision? What is your plan? How are you going to achieve all these things? Church has very simple thing. Two things. Marry the church. Are you getting what I'm saying? Be employed in the church. The second thing. John 6, 28 and 29. He said, what shall we do? So that we will do the work of the Lord. He said, look at that genuine person I called. If there's any genuine pastor whose faith has result, follow. Two things if you do this next year, you will never fail. If you are committed to the church, you know, when we are doing it for glory, glory didn't know. Look, at she's enjoying the breakthrough. Because all her blessing now is from, he said, thus shall the man be a man that is blessed. If you see a man is blessed, look at how the person is blessed. He shall be blessed out of Zion. Because you have made Zion your foundation. I remember when they called us, when we had our first, everybody came, we had eight in the church, and I danced, they saw me dance. We went to them, Daddy, they said, Daddy, this was the best party we have ever had. I said, is that what you call party? Zion party? Church party? I said, I will leave it like that. I don't want you to know more until you are 18 years. So when others are talking about party, we had party, they, we went to party. They would say, we also went to party in the church. Their own party is in the church. Thank God for Abishop Ben He said, let your children do whatever they want to do in the church. Watch them if it is good. Encourage them. If it is not good, correct them. Obey the Lord thy God, the church, and you shall be established. Obey his prophet and you shall prosper. Can you stand up and say, God, Masaba Lagada, 2020, I shall anchor on these two things for my breakthrough and blessing. Your house, your house, house of faith, household of faith. And I will never, I will honor your prophet. It can, not money, but in sharing things. I will not be in church today, pastor. Something is wrong. It's just like there's a concrete agreement with few of you. When you want, I'm the one that tell you go to work. 
And when it happens, you have gotten, you do not miss anything. I'm talking about so that all your blessings shall come 100%. Lift up your hand to Maso Balagada. Krekete Mokoromo Korea. I assign the angels of faithfulness and angels that rewards when faithfulness is seen to be your portion throughout 2020. You will not labor in vain. As you serve God and as you honor his prophet, your testimony shall know no ban. Your testimony shall have no limit. Your testimony, yeah, shall in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. God bless you, church, as we share the grace.